the Specialized Saddle will be the last saddle you'll ever need to buy because our patented adjustable fit system lets you precisely fit your horse or use the same saddle on different horses you may get in the future. Don't forget to check out our website and try a Specialized Saddle. You'll be glad you did. Speaking of Horses is made possible through the support and courtesy of Step and Soak. We thank Step and Soak. It's a great new product. If you've ever had problems soaking your horse's hoof or foot, check out these pictures. It's very simple to prepare the solution, put the bag on the foot, let them stand naturally. Step and Soak. Check out their website, get all the details, and thank them for supporting Speaking of Horses. Speaking of Horses is made possible through the support and courtesy of Photonic Health. The wonderful product, Light Emitting Therapy. Check out Photonic Health because if you love your dogs, your cats, your horses, or yourself, Photonic Health, the wonderful healing product with the red light therapy, works on all of the animals and humans. Thank you, Photonic Health, for your support of Speaking of Horses. Welcome to Speaking of Horses, and today we are going to talk about the age-old story of grooming your horse. But there's, grooming your horse doesn't really say it. Uh, there is so much to this, not only to the actual grooming and cleaning of the hair and the body and the skin, but to all of the other things that you do as far as really working the horse, prepping the horse. It's a science. It really is a science, and no. Uh, we're lucky to have with us today Dr. Tom Tweeten, and Tom is here. Tom uh, has spent a lifetime now with horses and, and a lot of years in developing products on how to properly groom, but you're not just grooming, you're maintaining your horse. So, uh, Tom, welcome to the show. Great. It's, it's fun to have you up here at Tweeten Edgewood Stables and here in uh, Prior Lake, Minnesota. You're most welcome, and uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to share the concept that I have that has evolved, I think, over the years, and that's the idea of horse care leading to comfort and communication. Well, and, and we were discussing some of this as we were laying the plans for this show, but you've got some uh, tools here for horse care. And these are the tools that you like to use. So tell us a little about the tools that you like to use. Well, first of all, uh, my most important tool is my hand because it's the hand that really goes over the horse and really begins that communication process. Once that's done, I like to use a curry comb. Now, this is a mane and tail comb if you go to most tax stores, but I do not like to use it on manes and tails because it's pretty harsh and can break the manes and tail hairs quite easily. But on the body, it really gets down onto the skin, works some of that dirt and dander, and eventually the natural oils out onto the hair, making it much easier then to remove the filth, but also work the natural oil out onto the hair. So we move along once we've gone over the horse with this. And by the way, uh, on a new comb like this, what you want to do is actually take a rasp and round these off a little bit because some horses are a little bit thin-skinned, as they say. And so uh, what it really does also is teaches you how to apply pressure because it's, that pressure relates back then to the horsemanship of learning how to apply pressure through the reins and through the leading of the horse. So the comb is, is a really useful tool, not only in terms of grooming, but teaching a little bit of horsemanship as well. Okay, and you've got some other tools down here as well. Yes, we do. I like the jelly curry. They often call this a scrubber, but I hate scrubbing on horses, so I like to refer to it as a curry. And it has a knobby side and a much finer side. The knobby side is often used on the horse, and I always like to go with the hair, again, contributing to the comfort. We can scrub on the horse, and that works well on carpets, but with the horse, I want to go with the coat. Along with that, then, we have a couple of different brushes. One is a dandy brush, and the dandy brush really is designed then to get the, 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 the dirt out of the hair, lifting it out, working it, 
in a manner much like this and I like to use a natural fibered brush because it's the natural fiber that does not necessarily create as much static electricity. Plastic brushes are absolutely wonderful, they're colorful, they're fun to use but from the standpoint of the horse again that comfort factor you get much less static electricity with a natural fibered brush. This is a Tampica fibered brush uh, it gets down onto the into the coat onto the skin and you can lift that dirt out. Along with that then once we've got most of the filth out the dirt out with the dandy brush then I come back with a finishing brush and this is a horsehair brush and what we'll do then is layer the coat get the fine dust out of the coat and for the most part the horse is now ready to go and of course with the help of a few maybe uh, uh, maybe with a little help of some chemicals mm -hmm. uh, to get a little bit of shine conditioning of the hair the finishing brush is a great way then to get that nice little uh, polish on the horse so the horse is ready for uh, uh, showing off or just feeling comfortable ready for the ride I always tell people that um, grooming is not to make the horse look beautiful it's to make the horse look comfortable but a pretty horse will be one of the outcomes so those are the really the three tools that I use on the main part of the uh, body of the horse I follow that up with a rake comb and the reason why I like the rake comb for doing manes and tails is even though you have a long tooth surface it allows you to get down again onto that tailbone of, of, of the tail area to work the itch out and a lot of times the horse will begin to uh, feel more comfortable getting rid of that itch so working it and then working through and then using your fingers to pick through the hair so you don't damage it. Once the hair has been picked through then I like to use a pin brush of some type to then finish and brush out the hair and work the, the hair so it's nice and the tails are full, the manes are full. So really I have six tools it's pretty simple. There are a lot of tools that I carry around and, and show people that I don't care for and we'll talk some about some of those as we get into the grooming aspect of the horse. Well, these are the tools, and there are many reasons for them other than just a curry comb or just a brush. So uh, let's bring out a horse right now, and we're going to have Dr. Tom tweet in here, or uh, Dr. Tom, as we can call you. We're going to have Tom show you the actual way you should be using these, using these tools to not only make your horse look good, but feel good and do all of the things he talked about. So let's bring out the horse. Thank you very much, and let's uh, begin the grooming process. Speaking of horses is made possible through the support and courtesy of Chaff Hay. Truly pasture in a bag, you know, without beneficial bacteria and enzymes in the digestive tract. Horses in stock don't have good digestion. They don't have good absorption of nutrition. Chaff Hay creates this with your pasture in a bag and their wonderful yeast culture. Chaff Hay, we thank you for your support of Speaking of Horses. Speaking of horses is also made possible through the courtesy of Equine Technologies. For all of your hoof treatment, hoof care, and hoof related infectious problems, please contact Equine Technologies. Okay, we have our horse out here. I have Emily and uh, her uh, walking horse that she uh, boards at our barn. And what I'd like to do now is show you uh, how we actually use some of the tools that we talked about just uh, uh, a little bit earlier. The, the uh, tool that I particularly enjoy using is the curry comb. It's my least expensive tool, but it is also my most useful tool. But before I do that, every time I take a horse out of the stall area, I like to go over it with my hands, basically looking for areas that might twitch a little bit, that might be a little bit sore because if I find some of these areas that are bothering the horse, it's, also, it's really going to tell me how I'm going to be working with this horse for that particular day. If I find an issue with soreness or an area that is bothering the horse, I need to work that out, massage it out before I begin to actually work the horse. Once I've done that, I begin the grooming process. And for those of you that haven't used the curry comb, I want to emphasize that as we use it, we're not using it as a comb. We're not locking our wrist. But what I want to do is use it much like a dandy brush where we're actually massaging and working the filth off the, off the skin onto the outer part of the coat and eventually onto the ground. So 
as I work this, we can see then how we're working some of the loose hair out. And of course, when we have uh, in the spring and the fall, when these horses are in full shedding season, this works very, very well to work that hair out and get it off without damaging the coat. So you can see how we've collected some of this hair and can work it down uh, out and away from the coat. If the horse begins to show signs of irritation, then I want to learn to work the comb a little bit more gently, maybe a bit more slowly. If we have a horse that's very thin skin, I can actually take the comb and turn it over and massage that area and work the hair without damaging it. One of the things that we find with a lot of uh, combing tools and basic grooming tools, like the shedding blade or the actual curry, is when we work this, we're really working on the surface of the hair and we tend to tear the hair and damage it. Then we need to come back and polish the hair with some type of chemicals. Whereas with the curry comb, what I'm able to do is actually work that hair, work that filth out without damaging the hair, creating the dullness. And the other thing is, uh, along with then working the hair, we're working the natural oil out onto the coat as well. And that's one of the values of not only grooming your horse before you work it and ride it to help it relax, but also after you have worked the horse. It's a great way to come on back in, massage, and help the horse cool down. Any of you that have had any experience as athletes know that a lot of the great athletes, after they get done with their workouts, after they get done with their game, will go back and get massages as well. And part of that is to help them relax and cool down much more quickly, get that blood uh, flow down to a more, and that heart rate down to a more normal rate. So those of you that may be uh, competitive trail riding or eventing, this is a great way to help that horse cool down after they've been worked. So it's a great way for those of us that enjoy trail riding and just relaxing our, with our horses. It's a great way of just saying, thank you. We enjoyed the ride. It's a way of giving something back. So working the coat, and again, notice that I'm not locking my wrist. I'm not combing. What I'm doing is working, softening, and working my wrist to massage this area. I'm working it much like you are taught maybe to work a dandy brush. And you'll notice up in this area where we have the saddle area, maybe this horse has rolled a little bit. We've got some dust up there. And I can work it this way as well. Begin to see we're working some of that dust out as well. And the value of that is, of course, is it allows the skin to breathe. So in these hot days like we are having this summer in Minnesota and, of course, around the country, it's been quite warm. What we find is, is we want this coat, that skin, to be able to breathe so that the heat can easily move away from the body of the horse. Now, I'm back here in the back end of the horse, and you'll notice the thing I pretty much try to do all the time as I'm working this horse, and it's a safety thing that I really encourage you to consider, is to keep one hand on the horse. That way, in terms of feeling what the horse is doing. So if I begin to feel that muscle flexing, I can move away from the horse very quickly in case we take it. Maybe he has some flies and maybe he's kicking a little bit. I want to be able to be aware of that from a safety standpoint. But then I move on, work this area. And as I go, I tend to try to work different areas rather than methodically working from one end of the horse to the other. That reduces the boredom of this so-called grooming process. So we work over it. I don't go down and spend a lot of time on the legs with my curry comb. But I'll go down there with my uh, jelly curry after we get done with the main part of using the curry comb. And you'll notice that with the comb now, I've got, you see where the dirt has begun to build up and the filth, 
that's what we're trying to work out. So it really gets down onto the skin and is a, a great way to reduce the itchiness of the horse. In fact, a lot of times after we get done riding, if you turn a horse out, it'll go roll. What we have found is, is when we comb the horse out, curry it out, and help it cool down a little bit before you turn him out, more often than not, they will not roll, which is very interesting. I was quite surprised uh, to see that. Uh, many, some of the times when I turn my horses out, one that has been one that has been will not roll. So rolling is not a bad thing, but many of us, after we clean the horses up, we're a little disappointed with those horses when they go roll because they tend to get a little bit dirty, and we say, gee, you know, I just cleaned you up. But at any rate, it's a way to reduce the uh, negative aspects of rolling. Now I'm going to come back and work the jelly curry. And again, you'll notice that as I work the jelly curry, I'm working it with the coat. I talk about horse care leading to comfort and communication. Working the coat with the hair contributes to the comfort. Working the, and scrubbing on the on the coat like this rubs the hair the wrong way and can contribute, actually contribute to discomfort. Now, if any of you have ever rubbed the hair the wrong way on a cat, you'll know what I'm talking about. Horses are a little bit more respectful and will not necessarily bite or claw you, but I have seen horses that have been really uncomfortable when they have had the coat rubbed the wrong way. So always work with the coat. And once again, as I work with the coat, I'm working the filth back. And you'll see up in this area right here that we've got a fair amount of dust and, and filth that has worked out onto the surface of the coat. I can actually go to the back side of my jelly curry and work that area a little bit, work some of the finer dust out. And as I work it out, I can move it off the horse. Now you'll notice one of the things that I find interesting is, is a lot of times in this drier weather that the static electricity actually causes the hair and the filth to cling to the horse. And that's where I like to come back and use a little bit of moisturizer like the coat enhancer to spray on my horses to reduce some of that static charge so that the filth will actually leave the body. So right now I'm going to go ahead and and hold the horse very gently with my left hand and go ahead and lightly spray the body with the light coat of the coat enhancer. If you have a horse, if you have a horse that is uh, uh, hasn't experienced sprayers or sometimes if, if, if it's a new sprayer, it has a different sound to it. We might not hear it, but the horse will hear it differently because their hearing is much, much different now. So what I like to do is set it off to the side, set it down here where they can see it, and they can experience the sound before I'll actually go up and spray them. If you have a young horse that is not used to uh, sprayers and is very, very sensitive, a lot of times you can go ahead and spray it right on a brush and go ahead and then work the product on to the coat. It's a way of getting around it. We don't have to win every battle. Our objective here is to get a conditioner on the horse so we can soften the coat, get the filth out so that the coat can breathe, so that the hair can move the sweat, move the moisture away from the body, move the heat away from the body. And so here again, you can see now, if we look at the coat quite closely, we've really been able to get away, get away, move that hair and that dust away from the coat. One thing I like to also, another thing I like to share with people, and that is, is on a coat like this, a white horse, of course, tends, and Emily, you've had this horse for a number of years now, and you know that they never seem to get dirty in the dark areas. It's always the light areas, isn't it? <laughs> and one of the things I like to emphasize with these light horses is to dry clean before you wet clean. Get as much of that filth off these legs and off these white areas as possible 
before you be, begin to try to clean them up with a uh, rinseless shampoo or even shampooing. Use the curry to clean the leg area. And if it's a well-trained horse, they'll pick the leg up for you so you don't need to bend over as far. Of course, they're also trained to pick those feet up because we also want them to be, be able to clean the bottom of the hooves as well. So a lot of times these horses, the way we trained them, as soon as we touch them, they'll pick up. And you say, no, I want you to stand with the legs down. But uh, do take advantage of it if they're willing to pick it up. That's great. We can work these areas and clean this white area up very nicely, dry cleaning it, rather than coming back and perhaps using a rinseless shampoo. If we're doing a rinseless shampoo, we can go ahead and use a towel. A lot of times, I'll spray the rinseless shampoo directly on the towel and then come back and wipe that area clean. Rinseless shampoos don't need to be washed out because many of them are low allergenic and should not should not interfere or create um, or damage the skin in any way. Then I can come back with jelly curry once again using the soft side to work that area. Legs are an area we oftentimes forget about because we clip them if we're showing or um, working the horses during the summer and we don't want to have a lot of hair on the legs. I like to leave as much hair on the legs as possible for outdoor horses because this hair is protection from flies. It's protection from grasses that might be out there um, that may have some of the irritable weeds in it that could irritate the skin. So I like to leave a lot of hair the natural hair on the legs as much as possible unless I'm showing. The same is true up in the facial areas. I like to leave that hair there because if they're out in the pasture, it serves as protection. It also serves as protection if you have um, insects. So try not to clip this area, and if you do, do it only for show purposes rather than just to uh, clip it for uh, uh, reasons of appearance. It's there for their protection. I'm going to go back up again, work this area, and any of you that can see this with the sunlight will begin to see that we're naturally working that shine out onto the coat. Now I'm going to come back with my dandy brush to get some of the, some more of this filth out there. Dandy brushes many times come in different sizes, and it just depends on uh, how comfortable you are with one of these brushes in your hands. A smaller brush is a little lighter, it's a little easier to use. You can be a little more ambidextrous with it. A uh, larger brush goes faster. So there's no, there are advantages to both sides, but there isn't a whole lot of difference. So I'll go ahead and once again, using my wrist, use short lifting strokes to work that dust out work that natural oil out onto the coat. So as we go, once again, we're getting the dust out. And of course, that's what's really then helping to get rid of the dullness. And we're getting that natural shine to the coat. Uh, I told you about the curry. Never use it on your horses. If you have one of these, don't take it to your local uh, tax swap, but you can use it to clean your brushes. It won't damage the brush near as much as it will damage the hair. Then we can come back with the horse hair brush, the fine brush, and work that coat, layer the hair, and get the last of the the dust out. This whole advantage of learning how to use your wrist well also contributes to your horsemanship because it teaches you how to hold the brush to work those wrists because when we're riding we need to be able to work with our wrist 
not from our elbow. And that's why I encourage you, don't brush with your elbows, locked elbows or locked wrists, but gently and carefully work it lightly and apply pressure as needed and then work that coat. Finally, we can put the polish on if we'd like, and I like to use a polish like the coat finisher that does not leave the hair feeling plastic but will give a nice shine. Will not inhibit, again, the sweating and the movement of heat away from the body. So we can lightly use the finisher then to work over the horse, give a nice shine to the coat, down onto the legs. And these particular products have essentials, essential oils in them like lavender, the coat enhancer that we used a little bit earlier has a citronella, which is a product used to help repel insects and works, it's a product that we, works very well for these horses. So wrapping up then, as far as caring for the body of the horse, we started with the curry comb, work the body, that's the most important tool. A lot of times that's all I'll use before I'll work the horse, then come back with a dandy brush, brush out most of the, the filth, help the horse relax, saddle up, do the work I want to do, come back, go with the curry comb, followed by any uh, additional work with curry, then a dandy brush, followed by a finishing brush. And then that really allows, allows the need for a minimum amount of chemicals to then polish and finish the horse. So then we have a horse that as it goes out into the pasture, prances around and says to the rest of the horses, look how good I feel. I guarantee you they're not going out there to say, look at how pretty I am. We're contributing as part of our horse care, leading to comfort. The comfort then can lead to the better communication with our horse. So I hope you enjoyed this segment of horse care as part of Comfort Collection. And I hope to see you somewhere down the road at an expo uh, close to where you're participating. Thank you. Speaking of horses and made possible through the support and courtesy of Well Horse, what's in your tack box to heal wounds? Expect wounds to heal with antibacterial resins from Well Horse. Well Horse promotes healing kills fungal and bacterial microagents on contact. Well Horse was rated in the top 10 of 440 products rated by the Horse Journal. Thank you to Well Horse for your support of Speaking of Horses. Speaking of Horses is made possible by Equisentials Horse Care Products for products developed by a horse person, for horse people, and horse use. Please check out Equisentials Horse Products they have all the products you need to perfectly care for your horse's coat and physical appearance and well-being. Equisentials.